Lorraine Teagan, Bob Buda, welcome to Connecting with Dave Lester Bain for today, Thursday, the 29th of December, the final show for the year 2022. And of course, I have the distinct pleasure of having one of the notables across the region as an attorney at law. We say a very special good afternoon to Mr. Dwyer Astafan. Uh, he should be with us on the line. Is he on the line? Okay, good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good afternoon. Okay, I'm fine, good. thank you. How are you? Okay, great. I'm seeing you also. Uh, welcome, yeah. welcome to connecting with Dave Lester Payne. Uh, I want to say thanks and uh, for giving me this opportunity for speaking to you. And uh, it's all about Antigua and Antigua politics. It has so much to do with our Mr. Asset Michael, who was nominated yesterday as an independent candidate in, uh, of course, the St. Peter's constituency. Now, there has been some ups and downs here and there, court cases, all sorts of things has been going on. Mr. Uh, Michael would have had recently had his attorney uh, reminding, of course, the Electoral Commission of what the court would have ordered uh, some months ago. And I just figure that uh, if there's anyone who can enlighten me about these things, because I'm no lawyer, not even a Bush lawyer, I'm a broadcaster. <coughs> so I just wanted you to fill me in with your opinion as far as what's happening with uh, Mr. Asset Michael and, of course, the St. Peter's constituency and the Antigua Labour Party. Okay, thanks for having me, Dave, and thanks for having me, Observer. Now, I don't have full knowledge of all of the details of this matter, mm. but I will, I will respond in general terms. Good. And in layman's terms, Okay. because we're speaking mostly to laypersons. Yes, we are. It's important that the people understand what is being said. Now, everybody knows that there have been problems between the leadership of the Labour Party and Mr. Michael, and that the leader of the Labour Party has said on more than one occasion that Mr. Michael will not be a candidate of the Labour Party in the next elections. Mm -hmm. So, Earlier on, there was talk that a gentleman called Mr. What's his name? Mr. Was, Turner. Was, Mr. Turner. <clears throat> Mr. Turner <Yeah. clears throat> was going to be the candidate. Um, Mr. Michael took legal action, basically making the argument that the constitution of the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party was not being followed. And it's a very important argument, Dave, mm -hmm. because if he is correct in his argument, and I dare say he is correct, if he's correct in his argument, it means that the process of appointing Mr. Turner was in breach of the constitution of the Labour Party. Indeed, a court decision, I think it was April or May of this year, said as much and also ordered that Mr. Turner could not be the candidate, and I'm using my own words, mm. not the words of the, the, the order, he could not be the candidate unless and until the process was followed in accordance with the Antigua Labour Party, Antigua Barbuda Labour Party constitution. And that has stood since April or May when it was delivered. Now, more latterly, it seems that a document was sent into the court called a certificate of compliance. One would conclude that that submission would have been in pursuance of the court order. Yeah. And the certificate of compliance would indicate that the Labour Party and Mr. Turner were now in compliance, had amended the Constitution, and he had been appropriately and properly selected as the candidate. 
It turns out from examination, in fact, interestingly enough, Dave, yeah. based on my knowledge, information, and belief, it turns out that whereas you would have expected that accompanying the certificate of compliance from the lawyer of the Labour Party, there would also be documentation showing that the notice for this meeting to amend the Constitution had been given and properly given, that the resolution or resolutions purporting to amend the Constitution, copies would have been included, and the minutes of the meeting amending the Constitution would also have been included. But none of that happened. It was just the bare and naked certificate of compliance, which I am told did not have the signature of the registrar on it or the seal of the court. So the validity of that certificate has, be, has to be called into question. The net result of all of this, and, 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 and this is a very serious matter, Dave. I'm listening. The net result of all of this is, if my information is correct, that Mr. Turner was not only not properly selected by the Labour Party, but that also he could not be logically nominated by the Labour Party, which would question the validity of his nomination yesterday. And the court issued another document indicating and naming persons, but also including everybody in the Labour Party, I would take it people in decision-making positions, mm -hmm. any of those persons who would support that illegal action could find themselves in contempt of court. Now, the election supervisor I, I can't recall the lady's name. That's uh, Miss Simon. Miss Simon. Miss Simon is in a position officially and presumably of sufficient experience and knowledge to have inquired as to whether the Labour Party had indeed complied with the court order, court order and gotten the court's clearance of the injunction and gotten the court's blessings for Mr. Turner to proceed. Had she done that, she would have discovered more than likely that Mr. Turner was not properly presented for nomination. Likewise for the returning officer. Now, this is not an attack on anybody or holding a brief for anybody else. But if for something like this, a party, and not just a party, the party that has occupied government in Antigua for more years than any other party, would have this kind of disregard for its own constitution, which is the symbol of stability and democracy for the people in that party, how could they be qualified to safeguard and promote the constitution of Antigua and Barbuda if they are abusing their own constitution? Now, what I'm saying here is not intended <clears throat> to disturb fanatic party supporters or to stir up fanatic party supporters. If they're stirred up, then that's a matter for them on either side. But if Antigua and Barbuda or St. Kitts and Nevis or any one of us 
as a person or as a country want to get anywhere in life and become respected little nations we have to understand that the rule of law <clears throat> and not the rule of rulers must govern our affairs can i pose this question to you uh mr if i may, if you allow me to say one more thing go right ahead now i just found out maybe a half hour ago that an article came out challenging the nomination of a UPP candidate. Yeah. On the grounds that, on constitutional grounds. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting that the Labour Party machinery would want to use the constitution of Antigua and Barbuda and to weaponize it against a political opponent. But they don't want to use their own constitution to do the best thing and the right thing for their party. So they're not only weaponizing their own constitution, but even today, they're weaponizing the constitution of the country, which they have governed and want to govern again for five more years. The people of Antigua and Barbuda need to be reasonable and not let party affiliations or personal affiliations obstruct them from making the best choice in the next election for them in the country. I have a few more things to say on this, but I'll take your question now. But I am going from recall memory that the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party did have a convention <clears throat> where they would have changed uh, their constitution. They did have what? They had a convention where they. So, that, mm -hmm. so if they had a convention, mm -hmm. does that does that mean the proceedings were were constitutional? No. What I'm trying to figure out when they had that meeting where they changed the constitution, would that in any way negate the court's action, as far as Mr. Michael is concerned and Mr. Turner? No. Only if. The proceedings at that meeting, the notices and the tr what was transacted at that meeting were in full compliance with the party's constitution. Now, I understand that in a, in, in a matter like this, mm. party members are to get 45 days notice. I am told that Mr. Michael didn't get any notice at all. I am told people got 30 days notice and that sort of thing. But it says 45, and it says 45 for a reason, Dave. You have to give people time. This is a meaty and important matter. It's a constitutional matter for the party. Yeah. And it has immense political implications. And it seems that they butchered it. So why would they have submitted a certificate that was not valid? Well, you are in the media. You should ask them. Okay. Election was coming. They called the election. Yeah. And maybe they stumbled upon a faux pas and tried to fix it. But as I said, there are possibilities of contempt. Now, I don't know if the court can be mobilized in time for the election. But in my opinion, again, based on the limited knowledge I have of the case, mm -hmm. in my opinion, and I'm giving you that caveat. In my opinion, Mr. Michael is in a very good position legally. Mm. And a number of people could find themselves potentially in some hot water. So even before the election, if he doesn't get a hearing before the election and he loses the, the, the seat, he can still bring an election matter to the court challenging Mr. Turner. So the, he has the cards in his hand. And I believe this is so disappointing for a party with such a long history and tradition, a party that has done a lot for the country. Mm. Um, you know, um, and again, this is not personal, but it boils down to leadership, Dave. You cannot be a great leader 
unless you humble yourself to the rule of law. And remember, the way that you treat the least among us is the way that you treat me. And this is not weaponizing power, weaponizing constitutions and laws. Doesn't only hurt the intended victim, you know. It hurts your supporters too. Mm. Because today my house is burning. You don't wet yours. You know what will happen to yours tomorrow. What I see here is Mr. Michael having all of the high cards legally and Mr. Michael having a bag full of political capital that he can use in this election. Not only himself, but the others who are opposing the government. This reflects badly on the, the incumbency, very, very badly. Does, does Mr. Michael run in as an independent? give the Antiguan Barbuda Labour Party a voice or a stepping stone to have Mr. Turner in the party? Repeat that, please. Does Mr. Michael, the clear in his hand as an independent, does that give the Antiguan Barbuda Labour Party the right to choose a candidate? Yes, they, they, they have a right to choose a candidate. Um, whether Mr. Michael remained in the party or not. Mm. And the, the candidate doesn't have to be Mr. Michael. Mm. The candidate in whatever other constituency that Mr. Brown is in doesn't have to be Mr. Brown. Mm. It is for the party to decide. But the party's decision has to be made on the basis of the constitution of the party. You just can't get up and decide you're going to put aside that part of the constitution because it suits you and you're strong enough and you have muscles and you have power over people. That is not how you lead. That is not how you, you endear and develop goodwill for the country. That's not a good thing. I, I mean, you know, I know I'll face negative responses, but I'm not afraid of that. You know, I prefer to be comfortable with my conscience than to be popular. And I want to encourage the people of Antigua and Barbuda, especially the young people. Vote for yourselves. Vote for yourselves. And vote for who you think is going to make the country better. Listen, there's so many things you have to do. In, 19, in 2014, because I follow Antigua politics to some degree. Mm. And if I'm if I'm factually incorrect, correct me, Dave. I will. If I recall correctly, in 2014, Mr. Brown promised he will bring water in 14 days. Yeah. That's true? Yes. But that's eight going on nine years ago. You have the water. Are you asking me if we do? Yeah, do you have it? Not the way we should. Okay. So, but anybody who promises a water-starved country, mm. an adequate supply of water in 14 days, is either fooling the people if they vote for him because he says that, or is him fooling himself because that is so unrealistic. But the point is he said it. And even for that, I as a voter would consider punishing him because he clearly is unsuited to provide us with the fundamental needs that we have. What about energy? Yeah. What about food security? What about infrastructure? And by infrastructure, I don't mean just physical infrastructure. I, I'm talking about social infrastructure too. Yeah. And things like broadband, the new economy of Antigua Barbuda has to be built within the matrix of broadband, bandwidth. This is the world of technology. Very much so. And the education system must be adapted accordingly. You have to stop spending all of this money on our children, educating them, investing in them, our most precious assets. And then when they grow up, they can't get a job and they migrate 
And our investment provides returns for some other economy, not ours. Becomes a brain drain to the country. If you can't pay your public servants on time, I have never known a day in St. Kitts, Dave. I've never known a day. Mm. And I'm 74 years old. Wow. I've never known a day in St. Kitts when public servants or pensioners were paid late. Not a day. Mm. How could you boast about good governance when you can't even do that? When you're doing a budget, 16% of which is financed by debt. You know, you're in problems. Forget this. I'm talking to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. We're listening. Through you. We're listening. Through you. Forget the bells and whistles. Forget the bells and whistles. Look into the eyes of the candidates. See who is genuinely interested in you and will sacrifice for you in your opinion and has sacrificed for you and has been there for you. Think of the infrastructure of the inconvenience and suffering you and your family and loved ones have endured because basic things like water and power and medication, simple things like that, were not readily available. I'm not saying you will go non-stop without uh, uh, um, supply. Sometimes you have breaks. Yes, you do. But when the break becomes the norm, then you need to change your leaders. If the breaks, and be you as if the breaks uh, become the norm, it's not adequately being provided. And you also have to change your mentality. Mm. And this is one of the things we found here in St. Kitts. Because we've cha we, we, we had a change of government in 2015. And we changed that government seven years later. That was an indication that the voters in St. Kitts and Nevis are not intoxicated by jump up and ban and chicken and $1,000 mm. and $10,000 and election hype. They are looking at their future for homes, for jobs, for entrepreneurship, for energy sufficiency. All of these things that give us dignity and sustainability as a, as a, as a civilization. And I mean, let's be fair. That has not been delivered under the leadership of, of, of Mr. Brown. It has not been. And let's be sober, let's be clinical, let's be analytic, and let's be honest. People making noise, jumping up behind this, 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 this movement. Still can't get water and electricity, our jobs, waiting on handouts. So you have to change your mentality yeah. and decide that you must be in charge of your destiny as a people. And this culture of dependency and underperformance, under productivity. Don't wait for a politician to give you a handout. What you want is a hand up. And don't allow your dignity and your honor and your integrity to be degraded because that is what is happening. People are celebrating their own degradation, Dave. And all that, it is still happening in St. Kitts. It is? That is, well, it is, mm. because we don't live in a perfect world. I can, say, I can say with a fair degree of confidence that the process of improving citizenship consciousness and independent thinking has gone a long way forward oh. in this little country. Okay. And Antigua is a country with great potential. My second favorite place in the world. I get you, dear. We heard you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So what, basically, as an attorney at law, are you saying, because I need, let's say they have the election, and yeah. uh, Mr. Michael is not successful at the poll. Mm -hmm. He is still able legally to challenge who? Challenge his opponent. The winner? If that's the winner, if Mr. Turner is the winner? Yeah. So that's the only challenge he can, he can because if, if, if uh, the 
UPP candidate wins, what happened to Mr. Michael? He can't challenge that. Well, that's a different matter. Okay. That's a different matter. I am, I am maybe presumptuously, mm -hmm. and forgive me for that, presumptuously, I am thinking that the fight in that seat will not be between Mr. Michael and the UPP. Mm. But again, I could be 100% wrong. It will be between Mr. Michael and the Antigua Labour Party candidate. I, I, that's, I feel so, but I could be wrong. But again, if the UPP candidate wins, mm -hmm. that doesn't offend any law. Because nobody has claimed that the UPP candidate was unlawfully selected. Okay, got you. So Mr. Michael's beef would be if Mr. Turner wins. Mm. And Mr. Michael is a very determined man. And I don't see him allowing a defeat by somebody who was unconstitutionally selected by his party. Again, particularly in face of the court order and potential contempt repercussions. I don't see Mr. Michael sitting idly by and letting that pass. As we look at the timeline, mm -hmm. do you believe that Mr. Michael, if he files anything in the court, could have a hearing before the election day? I think that that might be a, a big ask. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am not so sure it will happen. But, but as I said, he has the cards in his hand. But nothing, he that, wins, mm -hmm, but nothing that Mr. Michael does would delay our election here on the twenty on the eighteenth for the for Antigua and Barbuda. Well, if Mr. Michael succeeds, then Mr. Turner would have to stand down. He can't run. Okay. Okay. Well, because he's 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 unconstitutionally um, selected which means that he is illegally nominated. And by, and by that you mean... And that's null and void. And if, if, if you are illegally nominated, mm. but I think the court maybe will say, well, let the election take place, and then you could come up with an election um, challenge after the poll, which I think is the way it will go. But if, the, if it happens before the election and the court makes the ruling in favor of Mr. Michael, and I'm saying if, and that's a big if, Yeah. Mr. Turner will have to go. Now, all this is based on the fact that the Antiguan Barbuda Labour Party did submit a certificate to the court saying uh -huh. they would have met the court requirement. And you're saying that there's done some deficiency as far as that is concerned. Well, they sent a certificate of compliance. Yeah. Now, if you tell me, if the court tells me, if you, Dave, yeah. I, am, I am doing something for you, mm -hmm. or you have, you have instructed me to do something, and I now send you a document saying, Dave, I have complied with your instructions. Yeah. I have amended my constitution properly. Here are the supporting documents to show that. Mm -hmm. Where are those supporting documents, Dave? Because sending a, a document calling it a certificate of compliance. And again, this is why I said the supervisor of elections should have made it her business and the returning officer to make it his or her business to get the information from the Labour Party. and. I am presuming, because I know Mr. Michael's lawyer, who is Mr. Marshall, and Mr. Marshall is a very tenacious practitioner, doesn't take foolishness. I am almost 100% sure that Mr. Marshall would have demanded those documents. So if, if I send you my report and said, okay, Dave, I've complied. Yeah. I can say, babe, do I wait a minute? You comply? Where's the proof? Where's the proof? So you're saying the certificate that would have gone to the court was not a legal document? 
well, it did not have the signature of the registrar, mm -hmm. nor did it have the seal of the court. And that is required. Well, if it's going to be accepted by the court, mm -hmm. becomes part of the court record, then it, it, it empowers the court and allows the court, in the absence of any other acceptable intervention, it allows and empowers the court to lift the injunction, to lift the prohibition. And I don't believe it rises to the level of doing that. <clears throat> But well, Mr. Estefan, our time has come and gone. I'm promising you that I'm going to connect with you before the election date on the 18th here in Antigua and Barbuda. But I want to say thanks a lot for spending some time with me this afternoon under these circumstances. Short notice, I must say. And uh, uh, forgive me, but I'm glad that you accepted my invitation to explain some of these matters. And here's hoping that uh, we can uh, connect with you again before the election date in Antigua and Barbuda. Anytime, Dave, anytime, anytime. Stay safe <clears throat> and enjoy the rest of the afternoon, Mr. Astifer. You too, brother, and regards to your viewers and listeners. Thank you kindly. God bless, God bless your country. Thank you, and I'm glad it's your second home. Thanks a lot. For it me. is, it is, man, it is. Thanks a lot for staying with us. We're taking a commercial break.